in the course of uh, doing my business as an independent smart city, smart mobility consultant, I regularly come across new technologies. And uh, this one we're going to talk about today uh, is particularly fascinating because of the ability to leverage existing investment. So uh, my main job in life is to assist private sector solution providers to enter or reposition in the advanced transportation technology, smart mobility market, uh, and also help public sector agencies to get the best from it. So hopefully today we'll tell you uh, something new about how to use existing fiber optics for high resolution speed detection. And I'd like to introduce you to OptiSense TMS and hand you over to Paul Cooper. Over to you, Paul. Thank you, thank you, Bob. Uh, and uh, hello to everybody on the call. Uh, my name is Paul Cooper. I am the business development director for the transport division at OptiSense, and I'm very pleased to uh, have this opportunity to present to you today about our experiences in using fiber optic sensing technologies for traffic monitoring with various clients in Europe and also in North America. So uh, first of all, a uh, short introduction to our company, OptiSense, as some of you on the call may not be familiar with us. OptiSense is a British company and a wholly owned subsidiary of Kinetic, a publicly listed company with approximately 6,000 employees and revenues of over 1 billion. Um, as an independent organization, we operate globally and OptiSense has its own offices in North America. As an independent business, OptiSense is 100% focused on the design, the development, and the delivery of fiber optic sensing solutions, and the delivery of fiber optic sensing solutions. And this is technology which enables us to convert standard single mode telecoms fiber optic cable into becoming an intelligent distributed sensor. This is a sensor which is capable of monitoring long asset distances with a minimum of deployed equipment. Each deployment has a range of up to 50 miles, and this fundamental advantage of fiber optic sensing technology over alternative point sensor solutions provides our clients with many performance, operational, and life cycle cost advantages. Not surprisingly, you will see from the slide that OptiSense operates in a number of market verticals, all of which are characterized by being dominated by long and linear assets. And in each of these industries, we deliver domain-specific sensing solutions and applications, which enable our customers to better protect and optimize the performance of their assets. Finally, you will note that OptiSense is a relatively young company. We were founded in 2007, which is around the time fiber optic sensing technology first became commercially available. And since then, we have grown into becoming one of the leading providers globally with many thousands of miles of distributed asset under contract globally. So before jumping straight into telling you about the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution, I'd like just to take a few minutes to give some context to the presentation and highlight some of the common traffic management challenges and issues that our customers tell us they are facing. Hopefully, you will recognize and relate to some of the topics that I will raise, and that will then help you identify where fiber optic sensing and the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution might provide you with some advantage as I go through the remainder of the presentation. So, most road operators we meet, whether in Europe or in North, North America, tell us that as traffic volumes increase, they remain under growing pressure to minimize congestion and journey times on their key routes. And even though this year has been dominated by COVID, which has of course resulted in reduced traffic volumes for a period, most of our customers tell us that this dip is over and that traffic volumes are already back to or very close to normal levels. To manage high traffic volumes effectively, traffic operations require access to accurate and timely information on the current traffic situation. This of course is critical as trusted data gives them the insight they need to make rapid and informed decisions when reacting to incidents and evolving traffic conditions. But getting the required traffic information requires investment in various traffic sensors and data sources. And this in turn presents another set of challenges. Roadside sensors and the supporting infrastructure have a significant cost. And this together with the ongoing maintenance burden 
often means that hard decisions and compromises need to be made when deciding between the desired density of sensor deployment and operational affordability. Most road owners and operators we talk with have already made significant investment in their ITS infrastructure, such as dedicated traffic management centers and operations rooms, and also roadside sensor and infrastructure deployments, costing many tens of thousands of dollars per mile. But even at these budget levels, they have often had to limit their sensor coverage or deployment density due to the high capex and opex costs associated with their roadside solutions. In pavement sensors, such as loops, for example, are relatively inexpensive, but prone to in-service failure. And furthermore, repair and replacement often requires an expensive road closure, and often a significant proportion of loops may not be working at any one time. Roadside sensors, such as radar or microwave-based point sensors, often require periodic maintenance or calibration. If a realistically high density of deployment say every half mile or so on key routes is required this can lead to a high can lead to high ongoing maintenance costs and finally probe data sources whilst maintenance free these of course will have their own limitations in terms of high latency low sample rate and limited functionality as well as not being under the direct control which particularly some of our as well as not being under the direct control of the road authority and particularly some of our customers in Europe consider this to be a, a, a business risk. So hopefully, as we go through the remainder of the presentation, you will see some of the performance and hear about some of the performance and operational benefits that fiber optic sensing solutions can offer over these alternatives. And finally, before I move on to the presentation of our solution, a reminder, just really on this slide, of the vital role that the road networks play in supporting the overall health of the economy. This slide uh, just shows a few headlines, uh, USA specific headlines, which I found, um, which show the impact of congestion and traffic delays on uh, road users and the overall economy. So really this, this little brief bit of research underlined for me the pressure that road owners and operators are under to keep the traffic flowing. But of course, to, leave, to, to avoid leaving this slide on a negative, I would like to point out the middle headline, which is um, showing that congestion is actually reducing in uh, four out of the five most congested cities in the States, despite ever increasing traffic volumes. So this is clearly showing that uh, the investment in infrastructure, in roads, and also in ITS is, is obviously having a positive effect. So now let's uh, move on with the presentation and start talking about the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution and fiber optic sensing specifically. So what I would do as I go through this presentation is I'll try to give you a good overview of the technology and the principles underlying that technology, give you um, information on the performance and the operational benefits of fiber optic sensing and the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution to give an indication as to why customers in Europe and North America are investing in the technology. And then finally round off with a few uh, project um, case studies to give you a full picture. But to start that off, I'll talk around this uh, infographic slide, which basically gives the complete proposition of the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution on a single slide. Um, and then we'll, we'll go into a, a little bit more detail um, on the subsequent slides. So looking at panel one, what we do is we convert roadside optical fiber into becoming a traffic sensor. And in the vast majority of cases, we are able to convert existing roadside optical fiber into a traffic sensor, whether that is located in the uh, in the um, close to the side of the road, as you see on the diagram, whether that existing fiber is further away to the side of, from the side of the road, um, because as you'll see as we go through the presentation, the sensing range of the technology is impressive, and equally whether that um, fiber is directly buried or whether it's in uh, traditional conduit 
or whether it's in newer micro technology conduit. We can, in the vast majority of cases, provide good quality traffic monitoring information with its existing roadside optical fiber. Specifically, what we're looking for is we're looking for access to one of the dark fibers. Um, so we're able to leverage spare capacity within that existing roadside optical fiber cable. We connect up to the, uh, the dark fiber or the unused fiber, the OptiSense equipment. So the OptiSense equipment comes in a 19 inch rack mounted format. You'll see a picture of this later in the presentation, but typically we need about 10 to 12 U of space. And typically this equipment is installed um, in an equipment room or a network hub building away from the side of the road. Anywhere really where we have uh, the required power, the required environmental controls, and also the access to the fiber. And as said previously on the introduction slide, one of the advantages of this technology is the sensing range. So from each and every deployment of the OptiSense technology, we are able to monitor 25 miles in one direction and 25 miles in another direction, giving a range of 50 miles from each and every OptiSense installation. And of course, if we want to monitor longer road distances, we are able to um, network those, those systems together. Moving on to panel three. So what the OptiSense technology does is it converts that optical fiber, that spare optical fiber core into an array of intelligent sensors. It does this uh, through a technique called distributed acoustic sensing, which I will explain in better detail on the next slide. But just to say that what we're able to do is down that uh, 50 miles of uh, fiber optic core, we're able to create a virtual traffic monitoring sensor every 165 feet or every 50 meters. So effectively we can create an array of several thousand intelligent traffic monitoring sensors. Each one of those traffic monitoring sensors is able to detect the passing traffic as it passes along the monitored road. Um, I'll explain how it does that a little bit better on a subsequent slide. But essentially, we're able to convert that detection of the monitored traffic into highly accurate and timely traffic flow indicators. So the key or the core output from the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution is an average speed measurement. It's an average speed aggregated across the lanes of the highway in a particular direction but we're able to deliver that average speed measurement at a granularity or a spatial resolution of every 165 feet updated once every second, um, which I think you would agree is a, an unrivaled uh, quality of average speed measurement compared to what is available from probe data sources or what is practical using um, point sensor solutions. Because we're able to monitor the average speed very, very um, closely and accurately, we can look for changes in the average speed. So when we see the average speed slowing below threshold levels, we're able to uh, pinpoint areas of congestion, again, to within an accuracy of 165 feet. And then when we see that uh, traffic slowing to a stop, Again, we're able to pinpoint both the head of the queue and also the dynamically growing tail of the queue to within an accuracy of 165 feet. Furthermore, we can use the average speed measurement to um, produce journey times between configured locations. So this would typically be the uh, junctions on the road. And just to add that the four traffic flow indicators that you see on this diagram are all achievable with a fiber optic cable running parallel to the road. But at points where the fiber optic cable runs underneath the road or perpendicular to the direction of traffic, at those points, we're able to uh, provide traffic count and flow, uh, traffic flow volume um, indicators as well. 
So just to sum up on this slide, um, key proposition, I think, of the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution and the reason why our customers are investing in this technology is, first of all, that um, unrivaled uh, granularity of average speed information, which we can deliver down significant stretches of highway. And secondly, because we're able to achieve that with a minimum of deployed hardware, each and every um, deployment covering up to 50 miles, we can offer our customers a number of operational benefits as well uh, compared to uh, traditional sensor sources. So now going on to the next slide, I'll just uh, give a, a, a fairly high level insight how we use this technique called distributed fiber optic sensing to convert a roadside fiber optic cable into a distributed traffic sensor. So in this road application, we have a section of road. And as said previously, what we're looking for is a fiber optic cable running parallel to the road. And we're looking for a, uh, a spare or an unused dark fiber optic core within that fiber optic cable. We connect up to the fiber optic core, um, a proprietary piece of OptiSense hardware called the uh, interrogator unit. This is designed, developed and manufactured by OptiSense. And one of the key components within the interrogator unit is a high integrity laser. So the interrogator unit will send a series of laser light pulses down the fiber optic core. And for each and every laser light pulse that we send, a proportion of that light will be reflected or what we call backscattered back to the interrogator unit. So the interrogator unit is able to not only send the laser light pulse, but it's also able to look for and understand the properties of the reflected light signal at 165 foot intervals down the fiber optic core. And the trick is that when something happens on the asset, in this case a road, and in this case vehicles traveling down the road, a combination of the noise and the vibration from the vehicles traveling down the road will cause a microscopic disturbance or strain to the fiber optic uh, cable, which is running roadside. And um, this um, disturbance or strain will change the properties of the reflected uh, light signal. So the interrogator unit is able to not only, um, is able to understand the change in the properties of the reflected light signal, and using the processing algorithms that we've developed on top of the interrogator unit, we're able then to deliver the traffic flow indicators, which I mentioned previously. The first four of these are achievable um, using the fiber optic cable running parallel to the road and the traffic count and the flow rate indicators are uh, achievable where the fiber optic cable is running underneath the, the, the road at the fiber optic road crossings. So with that insight into how the technology works using distributed acoustic sensing, I thought it would be useful just to show you a, a slide here, which gives an example of the kind of acoustic data that we collect and the way in which we convert that into the traffic flow indicators, uh, which you'll see in the case studies um, later on. So in this top window, what we're looking at here is a section of road. It's uh, on the x-axis is distance and on the y-axis it's time. So this is a rolling recorder and this will animate um, when I start the animation. But the thing to look for in this top window is this is the, the kind of raw acoustic data that we collect. And each and every one of these black lines, which you see in this window, is a, um, effectively a, a vehicle traveling on the road. So the gradient of the line indicates the speed of the vehicle. So the more vertical, the slower the vehicle. And to some degree, the, the blackness or the thickness of the line indicates the type of vehicle, heavier goods vehicles making a, um, a darker or bigger noise signal than the faster moving slow vehicles. In the bottom window, you get a snapshot here of the OptiSense graphical user interface. 
And what this is showing again is distance along the x-axis. And this is the average speed measurement translated or aggregated for the lanes in a particular direction of carriageway or of highway. Um, the green is um, showing good road speed. And when you see the color code changing through to um, yellow and then through to red, that's indicating areas where the average speed is slowing and the, you know, we're getting congestion or we're getting queuing traffic. So what I'll do is I'll animate this now. Oh, just, excuse me. So just the, before I start the animation running, just to say that um, this top window where we're collecting the acoustic data is translating into this um, smaller area of the bottom window to make it clear. The other thing I should point out is that these gray areas that you see, these are areas where there are actually no vehicles at all. And this will become important as we go through this animation. So I'll start this running and uh, I keep your eye on this thick black line here, which is a uh, truck moving along the highway. And you can see that there's quite a few faster moving uh, smaller vehicles which are getting stuck behind the truck. The truck is causing an obstacle. And this translating itself into this bottom window in this area here where there are no vehicles and an area of queuing and congested traffic in this space here. If you follow the animation as it goes, you'll see that for uh, specific reasons, this obstacle now starts to clear and the slower moving vehicle are able to overtake the truck and resume their normal journey at normal road speed. And that translates to this area again on the graphical user interface where you can see the, um, the road speed returning to normal, vehicles populating the, the section of road here and the area of queuing and congestion starting to uh, reduce itself. I'm hoping that came through okay on the, the, the WebEx. Sometimes it doesn't, but I'm hoping that was uh, understandable and gave you a good insight into how we do convert these uh, raw uh, acoustic signals from the individual vehicles and translate that into um, traffic monitoring information uh, on our, uh, in our solution. So now just to summarize on the two areas I think where which are the key reasons why uh, customers in Europe and North America are investing in the technology. So one of those is the, the quality and the type of information that we're able to provide with the solution and I think it's really a key advantage that we are able to with fiber optic sensing and the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution provide a very granular and timely speed information signal uh, speed information, which is not possible with, with, with point sensor solutions, at least not practical, to have them placed every 165 feet on key routes, and is currently not possible with probe data sources. So this ability to you know, monitor the average speed at 165 foot intervals, update that once every second, and then monitor that very closely in order to pinpoint uh, areas and locations of congestion and queuing is a key advantage, I believe, of fiber optic sensing for traffic monitoring. The other key area and main reason why our customers invest in the technology, I believe, is the, the numerous operational benefits that we can provide um, compared to traditional sensor sources. So first of all, you can see on the left hand side, that's a picture or a, yeah, a picture of a OptiSense traffic monitoring solution installed in a network hub building. Uh, that's a 50 mile solution. And what you have here is you have two OptiSense interrogator units, one monitoring 25 miles in one direction and the other monitoring 25 miles in the other direction. And it's really this uh, efficient route coverage and the minimal amount of equipment that we need to deploy, which is where all of the operational benefits come from. Because the only thing that goes roadside is the existing roadside fiber. 
that actually becomes the traffic sensor. And every 50 miles, we're deploying this very robust, um, very um, low maintenance burden equipment, which will have a which will result in a significant reduction in the the, the maintenance burden for uh, traffic monitoring solutions. The equipment itself is very simple and uh, simple to install uh, and and rapid as well. So typically on an installation, we would be able to be collecting traffic monitoring information within about one week uh, of turning up on site. We do spend you know, two or three weeks after that period uh, tuning and calibrating the system, but you're able to collect data from the road very, very quickly. The installation and the commissioning process uh, requires absolutely no road or lane closures. So that's obviously a, a benefit. And as I said, you know, the equipment itself, um, we operate in many, many different industries. Uh, we operate in some of the harshest environments that you would find in the world. And the equipment has proven itself to be very uh, impervious to, to weather effects and has got a very uh, long life with a mean time between failures in excess of 10 years. And finally, once installed for traffic monitoring applications, there is no need for uh, routine or periodic calibration or maintenance. So very low uh, maintenance burden in operations. Just moving on to this slide. So this is a, a slide I presented to ITS Florida uh, a few weeks ago on a, a similar uh, webinar session to this. So this is, this is very Florida specific, obviously, but I think this does go, give a, an insight and, and bring home, um, you know, what that efficient route coverage can mean when uh, providing traffic flow information on a statewide basis. So pretty simply, what I did here was just, um, you know, collect some information from Wikipedia, admittedly, on the, uh, the route distance of some of the key interstates in Florida. Um, but what you can see from the analysis done here is that with 35, approximately 35 implementations of the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution, we would be able to provide a high quality, um, complete route coverage of these key interstates, um, which is obviously a big improvement over you know, traditional point sensor solutions and a number of those that you would need to deploy to um, deliver a, a comparable coverage in the state. I will, of course, just draw your, your eyes to the small print down here. Uh, this analysis is uh, assuming that, uh, you know, we do get a full 50 miles of coverage from each implementation. And of course, that we can cover both lanes with a, both directions of traffic with a single roadside fiber. But I think it's the, the, the indication here, which is important. So now with that uh, background, uh, just want to present some case studies of recent projects that OptiSense uh, has delivered. And you can see here that we have a couple from North America, a couple from Europe, and one about as far away as you can get from uh, OptiSense in the UK, which is in New Zealand. So I think the first thing to say here is that these um, you know, pictures of the roads, I think they really do show the, the sweet spot for the kind of roads that the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution and fiber optic sensing is really ideally suited for. And that's really key routes, multi-lane highways, um, fairly plain road sections, um, and of course, arterials as well, if they, if, you know, which have a, have a, have a similar look. The other thing to point out on this slide is that in the vast majority of these implementations, we were indeed able to monitor both uh, directions of traffic on these multi-lane highways from a single roadside fiber. Uh, in the cases of Atlanta and New Zealand, the, 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 the fiber was um, in the shoulder on one of the highways. And in the case of the project in Sweden, uh, the fiber was actually in the center of the highways. 
But as you'll see when we sh when I show you the animations, we 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 are able to provide good quality traffic uh, flow information from both highways. So just bringing up now, so what you're seeing here, and I will show you a few animations to give you a view of the kind of information that we provide to our customers. Uh, this is the OptiSense graphical user interface. So the first thing to say before I start any of these is firstly that um, all of these animations will be accelerated to, to some degree, probably times 10 or times 20. So things will be happening a little bit quicker than you would uh, expect to see it in normal life. The other thing to say is that this is a view on the OptiSense graphical user interface. Um, this is what we supply with our product, but many of our customers look to integrate the underlying data with their own uh, traffic monitoring systems. So just to say that that is easily achievable um, all of the data underpinning the OptiSense graphical user interface uh, can be accessed by a standard API. And we can definitely work with, well, we definitely work with our customers to help them integrate um, the data you're going to see in these animations into their own traffic monitoring systems. So if I just play a few of these quickly, um, this is the solution we have in New Zealand. What you're looking at there is about 40 miles of road, something like that. And as we zoom in, I hope you can start to see the granularity of information that we can deliver to our customers. So what you're looking at here is um, two directions of traffic on a three or four lane, three or four lanes per direction of traffic highway. And you can see that in these areas here, where we are seeing congestion and queuing, you can see the alerts and notifications that OptiSense would be delivering to the traffic monitoring uh, or the, the traffic management center. Um, but again, you can, can see the granularity that we can deliver and, and how accurately we can show where the congestion is and where the free flowing traffic is as well. Um, and you can also see the, uh, the journey time indications here uh, with the minutes, um, which are between set locations, uh, probably junctions. Just to go on to this another example from um, Sweden. Um, so this is a um, three or four lane uh, highway uh, in both directions, uh, running just outside of Stockholm. But again, I hope you can see, you know, the, the completeness uh, with which we're able to cover the uh, the different directions of traffic and also the granularity of data that we're able to deliver and how we can identify these areas of slow moving traffic in terms of congestion and um, queuing. And then just finally, I'll show you the project which we've recently completed or we completed it earlier this year in 2020 with the Georgia DOT. So this is monitoring a section of the I-20 in downtown uh, Atlanta. And this, I think, as I mentioned earlier, this, was a, this is monitoring two directions of traffic in a five, lane, five lanes per direction highway uh, from a single, um, a single roadside uh, fiber optic cable. Um, so again, you can see the granularity of information that we're able to provide. And also, in this case, you can see there's a, uh, a fiber optic road crossing on or near one of the ramps onto this particular highway. Um, so you can see how that uh, traffic uh, flow volume uh, vehicles per hour count is displayed on the, the OptiSense GUI. And of course, again, we could extract that data and display that onto um, you know, the, the customer's own uh, user interfaces. So I won't dwell on any more of these, but we can come back to them if necessary, they, but they, they, they do tend to repeat. But what I wanted to point out on the next slide is some of the independent validation, which uh, some of our existing customers have gone through to prove the accuracy of the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution 
compared to their um, you know, trusted data sources, their existing trusted data sources. So firstly, just to point out, two of the customers that we have in Europe, which are Trafiverket in uh, Sweden and Rijkwaterstaat in the Netherlands, both of those have uh, quite a strong uh, reputation in the European road market as being you know, innovators and leaders in the adoption of new technology. And both of, both of those um, put the OptiSense traffic monitoring solution through quite a rigorous and independent anal analysis. So in the case of Traffic Burkett, their current uh, trusted data sources or data sources of choice are microwave-based sensors. And you can see you know, briefly from these charts um, that there is a strong degree of correlation between the output of the OptiSense uh, traffic monitoring solution and the output of their microwave sensors, which gives them and it gives us a lot of confidence into the performance of our solution. Obviously, you, you will see some differences between the two solutions because uh, the microwave sensors are positioned on gantries at about 500 meter intervals and they update each and every time a vehicle goes past. And we need to correlate that with the OptiSense solution, uh, which is, you know, uh, the spatial resolution is um, 10 times better. It's every 50 meters or every 165 feet and it updates once a second. But you can see there is a, a high degree of correlation between the two. Um, furthermore, in the case of Rijkwaterstaat, they did a similar analysis, but they did um, they compared to their existing trusted sensor sources, which are inductive loops. And you can see on this slide that there is a, uh, a strong correlation um, between the performance of the OptiSense solution and the, um, the inductive loops. Um, and even when you zoom in um, to that chart, again, you can see that, you know, very, very close correlation between the two which gives a lot of confidence. It is, um, it's interesting to note that uh, this, this assessment was done by an independent consultant. And on occasions, they did find differences between the performance of the two solutions. But generally, this was um, proved to be a strength of the OptiSense system. So with the Rijkwaterstaat system, they had inductive loops which were spaced approximately every 500 meters uh, along their highway. And what, it, what we found was that when they were evolving traffic conditions such as queues or congestion, the OptiSense solution was much, much quicker, perhaps 30 seconds quicker to react to those evolving traffic conditions. Because when we looked at it uh, more closely, the, um, the, the inductive loops, they on occasion needed to see the queue develop for 499 meters before they even recognized that a queue was developing, whereas the OptiSense system was able to recognize much, much quicker. And this often translated itself in time to you know, an improvement of maybe 30 seconds, which was seen as a big benefit for Rijkwaterstaat when they were taking um, decisions in order to um, you know, um, control and have an influence on the evolving traffic conditions, most notably with their overhead uh, message signs. Um, just quickly, moving on, um, with Highways England, we did an assessment uh, in a tunnel test bed. Uh, this was a tunnel test bed which was heavily instrumented with CCTV cameras. Um, so each and every time there was an instant of congestion or queuing during the monitoring period, we were able to compare and contrast to the output of the OptiSense solution. And you can see from the key uh, performance um, characteristics shown on the slide that the OptiSense solution performed very well, 100% um, detection rate, uh, zero false alarms, and a detection time which was far, far quicker than uh, required by the the UK Road Authority. And then finally, um, just with the Georgia DOT, so obviously we did a, a lot of analysis against their existing sensor sources in order to uh, calibrate and tune and commission the solution. But um, during the, the kind of monitoring period we were undertaking with them, we were also able to monitor the Twitter feed on the road section 
and you can see that there were a number of examples where we were getting Twitter alerts that there were um, conditions of congestion and queuing on that highway. And we were then able to um, compare those to the performance of the OptiSense solution remotely from the UK and report back to the Georgia DOT that uh, the solution was working accurately and correctly. So that pretty much sums up uh, my part of the presentation before I hand back to Bob. Um, I hope I've been able to give you a good understanding of uh, the principles of fiber optic sensing and the benefits of the OptiSense uh, traffic monitoring solution, uh, both in terms of the, the performance and operational benefits it can provide. Um, but equally, I also encourage you to think of this solution as being complementary to previous IT investments. You know, clearly it can provide an additional source of high quality uh, traffic information, um, you know, in, in, a, in an efficient manner. Um, and this may in turn give, give you the option and the opportunity to both optimize your operations and perhaps consider retiring or reducing reliance on existing sensors and data sources in order to fully benefit from the operational advantages. Thank you, Bob. Thanks very much, Paul. And uh, one of the things that excited me when I heard about OptiSense uh, is the fact that we can do uh, very high resolution speed data every 165 feet along the highway, which would be difficult to do with point sensors uh, as far as I'm aware, point sensors typically cost about $100,000 a mile when you include the need to close the road and uh, do the installation, do the civil engineering. Uh, by the way, Paul and I are putting together a cost-benefit analysis on this right now. Uh, so if anybody in the audience has additional detail on how much it costs for point sensors and uh, the need for calibration, uh, the need for ongoing maintenance, we'd be very interested to open a, a discussion with you. Uh, as Paul mentioned, there's uh, near zero maintenance required with uh, OptiSense. I've also been talking to, to people that use probe vehicle data, which typically give you speed data, maybe five or 10% sample size. And uh, one agency we talked to spends about $100,000 a year on verification uh, of the probe vehicle data. Obviously having OptiSense would allow you to have a near 100% sample and be able to do the verification on probe data. Um, in talking to a couple of clients, they, uh, they got very interested when Paul showed the diagram with the raw data with the vehicle trajectories. And uh, one client said, that looks a lot like a time-space diagram for traffic signal coordination. And that made us realize, and I think we got a question on this on the, uh, the chat, uh, that this could be applicable to arterials uh, as well as uh, limited access freeways, especially ones that have fiber and a lot of arterials have got fiber. Um, so we think it could be great for key corridor traffic monitoring, arterial traffic management, verification and validation of probe vehicle data, and also taking a kind of portfolio approach to getting multiple data sources, shining a flashlight from different angles to get the complete picture and have the ability to do uh, uh, validation and verification uh, on, on the data. So uh, we're uh, very interested to um, extend, although we have a focus on freeways, and limited access highways right now, uh, we'd love to work with uh, an agency on arterial applications. We can see some major use cases such as uh, platoon dispersion and formation, uh, end of queue detection, and just being able to, to get the detail about how traffic speed is varying along the link. We also think this would be very compatible with automated traffic signal performance measures which focus on the intersection. I think if we put both of these together, we could get a very interesting uh, picture. Next slide, Paul. So uh, if you'd like additional information, uh, the ITS America people, uh, Elizabeth and Rachel, will have uh, contact details and we'll be able to provide additional information. Now, we've got a couple of questions that I want to ask Paul that came off the uh, the chat. Uh, Paul, uh, to get two directions of travel, do we need to have two strands in the same conduit? No, um, we can typically uh, do both um, directions of travel from a single fiber or a single strand. Right. 
And then the other question I think we answered is, can this collect uh, traffic signal corridor uh, data or only limited access highways? I guess the answer is both, as long as you've got the dark fiber. Yes, correct. Okay, and then the other poll said, uh, dig once is becoming more important. You stated this can work in conduit. Many of our highways have the fiber cable already installed in conduit or new conduit is going in. Uh, does this road sensing work well in both older conduit and also in the newer advanced future path micro conduit that provides multiple smaller pathways? Um, so, so the answer is that, that it works um, very well in uh, with direct buried fiber or with um, traditional or new micro um, technology conduit. Yep. Um, and I think it should be interesting um, to note that, you know, we've done um, significant or a lot of testing with uh, leading providers of um, conduit in order to, to validate the performance of fiber optic sensing with their, with their conduit technology. Wonderful. And I'm assuming that the distance off the highway and the, how deep the uh, conduit is buried is something that you take care of during the calibration and tuning process. Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the, 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 um, the things that we always have to consider is that we do need a, uh, a good acoustic coupling between the asset which we wish to monitor and the fiber optic uh, cable or the fiber optic core. So burial method of the fiber, the depth of the fiber, and indeed the distance of the fiber from the asset are always things that we have to consider. Yep. The, the good news for the traffic monitoring uh, market is that compared to what we monitor in other industries, the, the, the road vehicles are generally pretty noisy and they generally move in a very consistent manner down the, down the asset or down the roadway, mm -hmm. uh, which means that we are, are far more tolerant to, to fiber optic position in the, the road market than, than potentially we would be in some other industries. Cool. And a question from Fred, I guess, uh, playing off your caveat about 50 miles. What are the factors that would limit the system to read less than 50 miles? Um, okay, so yeah, um, so that would um, really be the, the availability of installo installation locations for the equipment. So, um, you know, the, the more or less the maximum range from an interrogator unit in one direction is 25 miles. So if you had your, your, your next installation location perfectly 25 miles up the road, then we would, we would maximize the, the range of solutions. But if the, the installation locations were a little bit closer spaced, then, then of course we would, we would not use the full capacity and may have to do a few more implementations. Cool. So <clears throat> essentially there would be two interrogator units rack mounted uh, covering 25 miles each. So one installation would cover the 50 miles, yeah. Exactly. But as, as I said, we, you know, we need to put the equipment into uh, a, you know, a, a hub building or an equipment right. room where we have access to the fiber and, um, and where we've got the necessary environmental controls. So, you know, we would really be dependent on those being available at, at the right kind of spacing around the network. Right. And does the 50 miles include any distance from the road to the hub or uh, any looping of, of, of uh, fiber? Well, it, well, it does do. Um, and typically we, we, we um, in that 25 mile calculation, we account for a, a, a typical amount of um, uh, spoils, spools of uh, fiber optic cable and the distance from the hub building to the road. Cool. Uh, question from Craig, who's obviously got some uh, knowledge on fiber. Can we use single mode, multi mode, or both and filled or non filled cable? Um, so it's uh, generally single mode uh, cable uh, uh, is what we use. Um, but we're able to use, um, um, you know, all, all types of that. Cool. And uh, from John, can you count vehicles lane by lane or classify them at points where the fiber runs underneath the road? 
Okay, so so it, with the current uh, traffic monitoring solution as described today, the vehicle counting is um, is not uh, lane by lane. Um, so so there is a, a degree of approximation with that. However, um, you know I think I started the presentation saying that uh, the technology well OptiSense has been in business since 2007, which is around the time the technology has been commercially available um so 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 it's a pretty new te new technology it's newer than the internet right so we're continually uh improve investing and improving uh in the solution and uh lane by lane uh vehicle counting and vehicle classification is an area that we are working in right now cool and we're getting a lot of questions you obviously uh, stimulated people to think about uh what you're offering, Paul. Um, has there been any discussion about adding an earthquake monitoring capability in addition to traffic monitoring? Um, yep, so that's that's a good question and getting uh, on the edges of my expertise as I'm focused on the, uh, the, the, the traffic monitoring market. But the OptiSense um, fiber optic sensing solutions are used in multiple uh, market verticals and uh, seismic applications is, is definitely an area where we, uh, we operate. Okay, and Kevin, uh, can the segment length be, be varied? You know, can it be shorter than 50 miles in order to hit specific landmarks? Yeah, absolutely. So the 25 miles is, is the maximum range. Yeah. If, you only want, if you want to monitor a distance which is shorter than 25 miles, then, then absolutely we can uh, implement and configure the solution to do that. Um, so, so no problem. All I would say is that if you are looking to monitor you know, very short sections of road, then th th there does come a point where the economics of the solution probably don't make as much sense. Right. We're better at long distances. Yeah. Yeah. Fred asks, what technology do you use to transmit data from the hub from the roadside to the traffic management center? Are there options? Um, so typically we just, um, it, 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 it's, it's a fairly low uh, bandwidth uh, requirement and typically we, we make that connection from, from the roadside to the, you know, the, the, the traffic management center just over the, uh, the, the road authority's own network. Cool. And then from John, how well does OptiSense TMS count slow moving vehicles? Um, so, so there would be a, um, a minimum speed threshold. Um, below, if, if we fall below a minimum speed threshold, then we probably do not get enough acoustic noise in order to be able to count. So I think um, you know the, the the correct answer to that is going to be in the in the detail of understanding the application. Okay, and then obviously as part of the tuning process, uh, you know, if we did like a um, pilot implementation, you would uh, determine exactly for the conditions what the minimum speed would be. Yeah, well, there's a minimum. I mean, there's there's a minimum road speed, which is around. Um, trying to get it into miles per hour, maybe 15 miles an hour or something like that, below which, um, you know, becomes more difficult to, to detect the vehicles. Right. And then the uh, uh, second part of the question is, do we provide volume information or, or just speed unless we're doing a transverse cut? Um, so so the, the, the traffic counting and the, the vehicle per hour volume calculations, they are only available uh, at the points where you've got a fiber optic road crossing, the fiber optic cable running um, perpendicular underneath the road. Um, and in theory, you know, you can, you can have several of those points for each and every deployment of the traffic monitoring solution. Cool. From Sean, how do you account for loose buffer tube fiber being longer than the cable distance? I hope you understand that because I don't think I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what I would say, without answering that specifically, because that sounded um, quite specific. Right. Um, you know, OptiSense is, is, is very experienced, 
to working with existing fiber optic cables. Yep. So we, w during our installation and commissioning process, we go through a, a process which we call geo-referencing, where we accurately map the, uh, the fiber length to the road position. Um, and we're very experienced at, you know, working with fibers which are deviating um, away from the, from the asset or where there are fiber optic spools or where the fiber optic cable is going in and out of patch panels. So all of those things, um, without fully understanding the question, I, I would state confidently that we would be able to cope with during a, a typical OptiSense uh, installation. So Sean, get in touch with us if you want a more detailed uh, discussion on that, we'd be happy to do that. And uh, last question is we're, we're kind of within three minutes of the time. Uh, from Paul, can the system be easily integrated into existing DOT software to generate a composite solution? Yes, yes, it can. So um, all of those, um, obviously, those case study examples I showed to you using the, the OptiSense graphical user interface, which is something which, which comes with our solution and is freely available to our customers. But most of them look to integrate that underlying data uh, into their traffic management software of choice. Um, and, and we all know what the, the kind of, you know, whether there, there's commercially available examples of that or there can be DOT specific uh, examples. But there is a, a freely available API which allows, um, you know, competent software engineer to access the underlying data in the OptiSense user interface and integrate that into their traffic management software of choice. Wonderful. So there's quite a lot of flexibility using your API to link uh, the interrogator and, and your kind of uh, mid-system platform into an existing traffic management suite, uh, you know, like iTerris or Delcan or something like that. Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's effectively integrating the, the data which is uh, underpinning the graphical user interface, the, you know, the the, the color-coded uh, average speed, aggregated speed, and the queue and congestion data. Uh, the data which is underpinning that can easily be integrated into third-party platform. Wonderful. Uh, hey, thanks very much, everybody, for the fascinating questions. You obviously thought a lot about what Paul was saying. Thanks very much, Paul. I'd like to hand back over to, uh, is it Elizabeth or Rachel at ITS America? Thank you, Bob. Um, I'd like to thank our speakers today for this presentation and our attendees for joining in. Um, please join us next time for our upcoming member webinar. You can find all of our events on our website at www.itsa.org. Thank you all and have a nice day. Thank you.